Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Interrogator from Warhammer TV. We're redoing this content to fix some technical and lore issues and to make sure that our episode is in line with fair use so it doesn't get taken down by Games Workshop, which unfortunately has happened to some other episodes. This episode is brought to you by Hawkins & Company. Everything today is soulless and mass-produced, but not the wallets from Hawkins & Company. They're hand-stitched in the United States from some of the finest locally produced leather and come in a variety of styles and configurations. I carry the bifold wallet daily, but they also have trucker and biker style wallets available. Use code counterpoints at checkout and get 15% off your order. Get a wallet that's manly, rugged, and refined all at the same time today. Living means learning to do what's necessary. And what's necessary can often feel like swallowing a razor blade. Sometimes I wonder if my hands will ever be clean. Most folk are lucky enough to leave their pasts behind them, or take a bullet before it catches up to them. I've never been lucky. I'll see you tomorrow. Living means learning to do what's necessary. We are witness to a veteran interrogator with latent psychic abilities and horrible post-traumatic stress disorder. Often, Warhammer 40k follows the glorious battles of Space Marines or the grim dark horrors of the warp, and survival is a luxury not given to most protagonists, let alone time to reflect on their experiences. Here, we see Jurgen, our protagonist, murder a man for neural suppressants and wash the drugs down with alcohol in order to temporarily relieve himself of horrible memories. We see flashes of demonically possessed children he killed, fields of plague-infested corpses being burned, and his former mistress, Belena, being murdered right in front of his eyes. In this case, what is necessary to survive is murder, self-medication, and furious depression. A brief background so new viewers know what we're even looking at. Jurgen is a former interrogator of the Emperor's Holy Inquisition. During the Horus Heresy, the civil war that birthed the modern Imperium, there was a need for special agents to take action against the enemies of mankind. These men, women, and Astartes were under the command of Malkador the Sigilite, a spymaster responsible for keeping the Imperium from teetering over the brink. After the Horus Heresy, the Holy Inquisition continued as it was needed to stomp out mutant, heretic, and alien plots that threatened billions of lives. Inquisitors were vested with nearly unlimited power answerable only to the Emperor, the Lords of Terra, and each other. Even then, it is argued that an Inquisitor could execute a Lord of Terra if their heresy was great enough. Inquisitors carry a sigil of their office and conduct investigations, executions, and military campaigns where and with whom they desire. They can recruit from gangs, any Imperial administration, any unit of the Imperial Guard, and even requisition members of the Adeptus Astartes for particularly hazardous missions. An interrogator is an understudy to the Inquisitor, a bodyguard, an enforcer, and a successor in the likely event of an Inquisitor's untimely death. Jurgen wallows in his depression, torn apart by his memories, and furious he was unable to avenge the death of his former mistress. You requested to respond. You requested to respond to your security. Fuck. You'd have thought I'd have been used to a thick head by now. Emperor's eyes. Nothing is this important. Come on. 
requested to respond. You are requested to respond to a direct communication. <sighs> what? Hey, you didn't think that you. What do you want, Eloy? Some guys were down here. They were, they were asking about you. Decent kid. A few credits here and there, and he kept his eyes wide from the shit heap across the street. Ugh. <sighs> More looters. No, no, looters, no. No, 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 no. These boys didn't have uh, nothing to do with the riots, no. No, they, uh, they were bearing a serious grudge. And spit it out, Eloy. I'm busy yeah. here. Look, I can't tell a lie, Jürgen. I mean, you, you know that, yeah? A man's got to have some pride. I've got to live by a code. <sighs> you told them I was here, didn't you? I called ahead to warn you. <laughs> I mean, what else would you have me do? <laughs> Great. You're the Emperor's saint. I'm almost certain I didn't lock the door. Still, there was always the smallest of chances. <sighs> Idiot. <sighs> Come back tomorrow. Thanks for not using dusters. Sit down. That I can do. It was a safe bet she had at least one more hitter in the corridor. Someone to watch their rear or back them up in a jam. To her credit, she keeps her eyes on me. She's played before. Have your friends from the hall come join us. There's enough Amasek to go around. Suit yourself. A glass. I really need to get new things. know who I am. The refuse surf. People have died for lesser insults. People die every day. True enough. Perhaps one day soon it will be you. But not today, eh? That depends. Hmm. I'm here on behalf of Edo. His previous messenger seemed Unable to appropriately get your attention. He wanted more than was due. You do not set the terms. You owe for the neural suppressors. Fortunately for you, Edo requires a situation addressing. Something someone of your skill would be aptly equipped for. I am not that man anymore. Yes. I'm inclined to agree. You don't seem to be much of anything. Certainly not resplendent with credits. So, as I said, interrogator. Interrogator? That man died with Bellina. Another damned ghost in the mirror. Edo's messenger keeps flapping her mouth, running through the details of some scheme. I can't hear. Not a thing. Nothing past the drumming in my ears. And so you will do this? No. I'll get Edo his credits. But that's it, friend. Once again, you do not set the terms. This isn't a choice. It would seem not. Oh, shit. Turns out I hadn't loaded it, at least not properly. A 
forgotten the mess of Mamo rounds made, especially up close. I knew there were two of them. One round left and two vat heads. On balance, today could have been worse. Let us take her, and we'll be on our way. Sure. Come pick her up. She's getting heavy. say we avoid joining her and go our separate ways. We can wait for the universe to find some other way to kill us. It's a safe bet that shooter of yours misfires. Uh, maybe. But your associates weren't so lucky. Your call, friend. Sure. Why not? Seems a shame to waste the ammo if I'm not getting paid. But this isn't over. Uh, never is. <sighs> not a chance the Emperor will bless me twice. Jurgen's hangover is interrupted by a servo skull telephone call from a manic informant. In the 23rd millennium, humanity survived a great war with thinking machines known as the Men of Iron, and so artificial intelligence has been banned. Any telephone, camera, or computer is slave to a lobotomized human consciousness to prevent rebellion. It's an imperfect, gory, and morally dubious practice of the Imperium of Man, but it does rid society of undesirables and enable complex technology, so it's universally accepted. Edo's enforcers prove they are at the top of the ganger food chain by pushing a Goliath gang member off the catwalk. Hive cities are gigantic arcologies of human life that recycle the air, waste, and even human biomatter in order to host a bustling and productive population. The economic and social strata between imperial nobles and the proletariat who work the forges, factories, and docks creates subclasses of malcontents who create varied subcultures of gangs. Goliaths love to use stimulants, steroids, and combat drugs to enhance their physical prowess, eventually growing into freakishly large humans, almost ogren or Astartes in size. This gang member being thrown from the catwalk is a state we don't care that you're affiliated, we run the show, and don't even bother being near us or it'll cost you. This attitude continues with Edo's emissaries first punching and then threatening Jurgen. Punching a member of the Holy Inquisition is a death sentence, but these men don't care because they know that Jurgen is massively indebted to them for the neural suppressors and his affiliation with the Inquisition severed with his former mistress. That being said, a man with combat enhancements, a talent for killing, and the authority to get into any room on the planet is a useful recruit, and so Edo's emissary attempts to strong-arm Jurgen into service. Chaos symbols are known to make humans queasy, and there are gang members who worship the Dark Gods for strength, so it is quite likely that Edo's emissary is knowingly or unknowingly chaos-affiliated as Jurgen's visions warp seeing her tattoos. This interaction goes poorly. Even hung over at a numerical disadvantage and with an improperly loaded firearm, Jurgen is able to use his speed and ingenuity to overcome his attackers. Maimer rounds from his stub revolver rip through his opponents until there's only one mercenary left, who backs down after his lieutenant is killed. Jurgen is safe. For now. A quick note before we move on, I 3D printed a cosmetic case for a 73 caliber firearm, and I have explosive rounds for it, effectively creating a bolter. I have an Indiegogo and Patreon that I am using funds from in order to build more science fiction weapons. If you want me to build a stub revolver based on the BFR 4570, don't hesitate to donate or join the Patreon. Balder, a former bodyguard to Belina, comes to save Jurgen from his spiral and relays that he has a lead on Belina's killer, Heroff. The lead is a Goliath ganger who is a regular at a bar owned by another former member of the retinue, Sother. Sother runs a joint known as the Voidsman and was a corrupt rogue trader's bodyguard before betraying them to join the Inquisition. The coolest thing about Warhammer 40k is its depth. They've had almost 40 years to flesh out the lore, and as a result, each phrase has pages of world building behind it. For example, the words rogue trader and Voidsman. 
The Imperium of Man has around a million colonized worlds at any given point. Disasters caused by mutants, warp storms, chaos rebellions, and alien invasions are common, and so there has to be a way to find and colonize new worlds. A rogue trader is an imperial noble given a warrant of trade, investing them with the authority to explore, colonize, and make war in the Emperor's name. They are given ships, crews, and troops for this purpose, and are given a massive amount of latitude in diplomacy. Rogue traders are the ones who make contact with lost human worlds, bring them back into the imperial fold. They find lifeless but rich planets to colonize and harvest them for resources, and they find Xenos outposts that need to be purged of imperial rivals. Imperial ships employ voidsmen, men and women adept in space warfare. They are armed and armored for that express purpose and train in low, high, and no gravity environments. Voidsmen are used to explore derelict ships and space hulks and to repel enemy borders. Sother is one such warrior and therefore not a woman to be trifled with. Sother won't join them in their quest for vengeance, but she also won't stand in their way. Jurgen is able to read the Goliath gang member's mind and see that Haroff is still on planet and was recently in a church down in the slums of the Hive. Jurgen and Balder take off, hoping to catch and kill Haroff. Emperor, this place has gone downhill. How long has it been? I haven't been this far down since the night I saved you from that Ogren Tithe Collector. The one with the pneumatic fist? Eh? Not how I remember it. Hmm. You might have a point. The fight is closer now. I'm more fierce. A few more months and this whole planet's gonna be on fire. Lord Claw's got the men, but Baron Sedimir has the support of the other houses. Civil war's coming. Damn mess we started here when she killed the governor. It started long before that. I couldn't tell you when, but there was a pattern to what Bellon had been doing. Hells if I understood it. But I know enough to understand the game we were losing started long before this particular piece was pushed over. This is getting bad. Fast. These people are starving. Claw and Sedemir. Whoever wins, they're going to be ruling ashes. Once we find Heroth, we need to get ourselves off this sub heap. Emperor knows why Belena came here. This is down to us. It always is. Even if contact is re-established with the Imperium, there's no saving this place. It's ripe for exterminatus. need to get to Heroth before he slips away. But this is on us. We might not need this, but I do. We have to help them, Boulder. When was the last time either of us did something good? <sighs> A lot of help you'll be. Just try to keep up. Often saving lives means taking others. Good has never been an absolute.
Guido sends his regards. <laughs> I told you it wasn't over. <sighs> it never is. Balder and Jurgen wax philosophical as they make their way down the hive. Bellina killed the planetary governor and created a power vacuum leading to civil war on this planet. Lord Clore is the most militarily powerful, but he has a rival supported by other houses. Clore's personal guard are holding back a riot as Jurgen and Balder make their way past. An explosion, likely caused by a rioter, is all the pretext needed for Lord Clore's troops to start a massacre. They open fire on the civilians, shooting unarmed men and women in the back as they flee. Jurgen's guilt overwhelms him, and he urges Balder to join him in a firefight to save those they can. This is the nature of the Warhammer universe. Surrounded by human misery, every excuse in the world to ignore other suffering, and yet some men, even though they're up to their elbows in blood, will try to do the right thing to redeem their souls. Jurgen again shows his enhanced combat speed and martial skill, able to kill a half dozen noble guards in ranged in melee combat. Balder also goes to town with his combat shotgun, a favorite of veteran guardsmen in the Adeptus Arbitus. Jurgen and Balder slaughter the guard of House Clore only for Edo's mercenary to get the drop on them. Now, if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell and comment down below for the comment gods. All of that is free, it helps me in the algorithm, and helps other people find my content. If you like what I do and want to see more of it, join our Patreon at patreon.com counterpoints, but it's also linked down below. We also have an Indiegogo for the science fiction weapons project we're doing, so if you want to see me blow stuff up, throw me a couple of dollars there. If you want to hang out with other nerds and talk about Warhammer, science fiction, politics, philosophy, model painting, kit bashing, or terrain building, then join our Discord and you'll find like-minded people, also free by the way. If you like political debate or essays, then check out my channels linked down in the description. If you need a wallet, check out Hawkins & Company. If you need third-party bits, check out Libra de Monica. If you need your models painted, check out Mastermind Models & Miniatures. If you need body and face wash, use Geology. If you need healthy breakfast cereal, get some Magic Spoon. If you need a gaming chair, go to Ewan Racing. And if you need a standing desk, use FlexiSpot. I appreciate you. Catch you in the next one. Until the end.